Hi everyone, in today's lesson we're going to look at what's called radiocarbon dating, which is the technique of finding out how old certain things are using radioactive carbon-14. So let's just say some archaeologists discover an ancient site in Greece or Egypt or whatever, and in the ancient site they find, say, a preserved skeleton. Using our knowledge of carbon atoms, and in particular radioactive carbon-14 atoms, scientists have actually worked out a way of determining approximately when the person died. So, let's look at how radiocarbon dating works. This is the mummified body of an adult man found in Egypt in the late 1890s. It's believed that he died in about 3400 BC, that is about 5400 years ago. So how do they know that? Well, it comes down to carbon-14. As we've seen in previous episodes, about 99% of carbon atoms on Earth are carbon-12 atoms, 1% are carbon-13 atoms, but 1 in a trillion or so are carbon-14 atoms. Carbon-14 is a beta-minus emitter, which has a half-life of about 5,730 years. It decays into nitrogen-14 as we can see from the nuclear equation. While we're alive, we eat food that is made up of carbohydrates, proteins, fiber, and fats, all of which are made in part of carbon atoms. As I said, about one in a trillion of all carbon atoms are carbon-14 atoms. So right now, we all have lots of carbon-14 atoms in us. You may think that one in a trillion isn't many, but let's look at some numbers. Each gram of carbon, all three isotopes, consists of 5 times 10 to the 22 carbon atoms, which is a 5 with 22 zeros after it, or 50 billion trillion. So, if one in a trillion of these is a carbon-14 atom, that's still 50 billion carbon-14 atoms. That's per gram, remember. Now, a human body is made up of about 18% carbon atoms by weight. I weigh about 80 kilograms, so 18% of that is about 14 kilograms, or 14,000 grams. Since each gram of carbon has 50 billion carbon-14 atoms in it, we're talking trillions of them. We are all very slightly radioactive thanks to the carbon-14 atoms that we have in us. Now we consume food that has carbon atoms in it, but we're also constantly getting rid of the carbon atoms that we eat. Our biggest waste product is the carbon dioxide that we produce in a process called cellular respiration. Basically, we burn the fats and the carbohydrates that we eat to get energy. The carbon dioxide comes out of our bodies when we exhale. We also lose chemicals that contain carbon atoms when we go to the toilet. The upshot is that the ratio of carbon-12 atoms to carbon-13 atoms to carbon-14 atoms in our bodies stays more or less the same throughout our lives. Carbon atoms come into our bodies, and carbon atoms are expelled from our bodies. However, when a person dies, the intake and the expelling of carbon atoms stops. So, if the body is preserved and doesn't rot away into the soil or whatever, then the atoms in that body mostly stay as they are. The carbon-14 atoms, though, decay by emitting a beta-minus particle, and they turn into nitrogen-14 atoms. The number of carbon-14 atoms will therefore slowly decrease. Scientists can now take a small fragment of, say, some bone from someone who died hundreds or even thousands of years ago, and test it to see how many carbon-14 atoms it has, compared to carbon-12 and carbon-13 atoms. Now, as I said, carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,730 years. This means that if the ancient bone or whatever that you're testing started way back then with however many carbon-14 atoms, when it was still part of a living person, then after one half-life, it will only have half as many carbon-14 atoms. And then after two half-lives, it will only have one quarter as many, then an eighth, a sixteenth, and so on. So, if the bone is found to have only half as many carbon-14 atoms as a bone of a living person normally has, which is about one in a trillion carbon atoms, it means that the preserved bone of the ancient person must be about 5,730 years old. 
If it only has a quarter of the carbon-14 atoms, then the bone must be 11,460 years old, since two half-lives have passed since the person passed. The smaller the percentage of carbon-14 atoms it has, the older it is. Thanks for watching this short excerpt from the sixth episode of the Shedding Light on Nuclear Radiation series, Radio Carbon Dating, some scenes of which you're watching now. In this episode, we explain what radiocarbon dating is, as you've just seen, and look at lots of examples of how it's used. We also examine one of the most overlooked aspects of radiocarbon dating. Where does carbon-14 come from in the first place? We explain the basics of how carbon-14 is generated high up in the atmosphere by the action of cosmic rays and how it ends up inside the bodies of living things. The video comes with an outstanding student activity sheet. Click on the link in the description below to go to the LEM website where you can download the sheet and also find out how to watch the whole program. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.